what Doug said. <laughs> and we'll get on the Doug rolling. <laughs> and away we go. Well, as we gather together, there is some technical information that most of you already know, but just in case someone doesn't, the service will be in voice and text. There is a copy of the service in the Red Book by the door to the sanctuary. I think I did that. Yes. You'll want to grab one of those if you need the YouTube links or want the lyrics for today's worship music. Speaking of which, worship music will be in the media player. During no peace, please be free to make any announcements for the good of the community. And frequently in my worship service, folk end up dancing right here in the aisles or in the back of the sanctuary, so the mood strikes you. I say go for it. Today's sermon is about seeds. The following song is an amazing list of world events covering about a 20 year period, which I think count as those kinds of seeds, both good and bad.
Yeah, well, I'm thinking that some of you might be contemporary to to Billy Joel, and so I'm, I'm not surprised to know that some of you remember all of those. Um, I don't have all of them, but I have enough of them. Well, welcome, everyone. Welcome to Friday Church of Christ and Conference Center, Second Life. We have official standing with the Eastern Association of the Southern California Nevada Conference of the United Church of Christ as a real church located at Second Life. And I still think that's pretty cool because I have sat in South Central Pennsylvania, I've sat in Northern Maine, and I'm currently sitting in Central Connecticut. And I still think it's pretty cool that we can partner with my brothers and sisters and non-binary siblings all across the country. And all of you, wherever you are. Speaking of wherever you are, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And uh, both Joyous and Doug have agreed to lend their voices to worship. And if I remember correctly, Doug wants to read this first one. So take it away. Sure. First reading is from the Gospel of Matthew. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat among them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. And now to us. This continues in Matthew. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up in the fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the furnace of fire, or there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous shall shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. Thank you both. Well, I'm sure I've said this before, and I'm likely to again, but it bears repeating. If it weren't for resources like the Revised Common Lectionary, I would likely skip preaching about texts like this one. You see, I'm more in line with C.S. Lewis on the idea of hell. I think of it as separation from God. And I think we can all think of people who separated themselves from God through thought, word, and deed. But I tend to think of the image of a fiery hell, a furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, as a metaphor. But also it reminds me of some truly hateful speech I've seen come out of certain corners of American Christianity, right out of their sanctuaries. Gleeful words like, I read the end of the book and we win in the end. In other words, <laughs> I don't like the scripture. I just don't, which is probably a good enough reason to take a good look at it. First of all, the author of Matthew seems to work with this gardening farming theme more than the other gospel writers. Today's lesson, for example, we only find in the gospel of Matthew. 
and serves as a metaphor to account for the mixed reception of Jesus' message and to forestall exclusion of those who are not responsive or who even stand opposed. The Pharisees, for example, have shown themselves in the preceding two chapters to be locked in opposition to Jesus. The lesson of the story is to let them be. This response is in accord with the principle of non-retaliation laid out in the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is teaching about not judging, seeking reconciliation, and loving the enemy require this approach. The parable urges trust that God is the one best able to judge between weeds and wheat and will do so at the time of the harvest. Harvest is a stock metaphor for eschatological judgment and already appearing three times in Matthew's Gospel. Wow! I think I've been focusing on the wrong part of that scripture. I've been so focused on the part I dislike that I've missed something important. In all honesty, I'm not that worried about her myself. And I shouldn't be worried about it for anyone else either. I dislike the imagery because of all the evil that has been done in the world, specifically to a community of which I am a part, in service to the idea of divine judgment in the form of hell. Part of what this lesson teaches us is that I should let them. The lesson of the story is to let them be. Not that I believe their stance is logically correct. Not according to these words of Jesus. The parable does not equate the weeds with the world and the wheat with the church. The mixture is both within and without the community of faith. It is possible that Matthew's faith community, like our own faith communities, is at risk of trying to do the sorting out prematurely. Confident of its capability to distinguish between weeds and wheat. Pagola suggests that there is a mixture not only in the wider world and the community of faith, but also in the lives of the faithful. Belief and unbelief, like the wheat and the weeds in the parable, are mixed together in each one of us. It is best to let the mixture grow together until the harvest rather than making premature judgments. That way, we do not mistakenly exclude any of God's beloved. Nor do we give up on ourselves in the face of our own mixed response. Read in this way, the parable is a parable of grace. Make no exclusions. This is God's harvest. God alone will judge. The theme of judgment runs through this chapter on the reign of God. From where I'm sitting, the idea of I read the whole book and we went points precisely to that kind of attitude. I know which are the weeds and which are the wheat. People just like are wheat and those people. The ones who obviously didn't read the whole book, those people are the weeds. From where I'm sitting, that is absolutely a recipe for mistakenly excluding some of God's beloved. And from where I'm sitting, that attitude is antithetical to the grace that Jesus preached. And yet, I follow my own logic. I should not judge those who take that attitude. I should just let them do it. The lesson of the story is to let them be. Holy God, that is a tough pill to swallow, isn't it? It feels like we're just to let the evil win and let God sort it out later. And that's bitter. That doesn't feel right at all. But there's a positive way to look at it. Stop focusing so much on what they're doing. Think about what you're doing. What kind of seed are you planting? Hmm? Wheat? Or weed? 
I highly suspect that we've all sown some of each, so we should be careful. As the Reverend Dr. Cheryl A. Lindsay puts it, the proliferation of evil and the seeming triumph of malevolent forces in the world can be discouraging, to say the least. That discouragement can motivate isolation and defeatism. The lesson for the early church seems particularly relevant to the current climate of divisiveness and rising and renewed oppressiveness. A word of wisdom from the Talmud states, do not be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. Do justly now. Love mercy now. Walk humbly now. You are not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to abandon it. The lesson of the story is to go ahead and let the weeds be sown and continue to go about sowing wheat. The lesson of the story is not to let evil win. It's to combat evil by doing good. Don't worry about what evil's doing. Do good. What do you say? Amen? This song is about how evil does not overcome the good that we put out into the world. Hello, Hurricane. You can't silence my love. Well, I seem to have uh, structured the um, the uh, uh, note card incorrectly, Doug. Let me find you the correct. Um, the correct link. I see what you did, yeah. Or you could just sing it for us. I'm sorry for the delay. Um, my internet suddenly decided it was just going to call and not load anything. I'm going to take a look as I we go. It should work. I see it as well if you want.
we have come to our time in worship that I really do believe is the core of what we do here together. That is where we uplift our joys and concerns with one another in prayer. And so I would like to enter this time of prayer with a sense of reverence. We're about to enter into a conversation with God, and that should not be done lightly, but rather with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, being every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Now, please type your prayers into the chat, or if you use voice, simply emote raising your hand so everybody can have a voice. As we pray together, you may wish to respond to others with words like, God, hear our prayer, or with any other words the Spirit leads to use. Doug, we pray for peace and discernment. Um, I love sending that out in the world as, as a generic prayer for all peace and all discernment. We can all use it. Oh, God of peace and the spirit of wisdom, hear our prayer. With joy, we pray for those who are suffering from severe heat or other difficult weather. Um, just more and more, I see evidence. I hear stories. Uh, uh, find myself weighed down by the fact that um, we have done a good job of caring for creation, and that we are reaping the. Um, we're reaping the results and uh, that the poorest among us suffer first. And uh, my heart is heavy. So we pray for those who are suffering as a result. And God of creation, hear our prayers. With Monica, we pray for those who struggle um, God, we wish for them to have strength and courage and peace. But also, sometimes, the place of school is also the place of growth, the place of learning, uh, the place of um, new beginnings. Sometimes that place of struggle can be uh, an exciting and fruitful place as well. And if that is so, God, pray that you um, guide the folk through it. Like you um, chose to guide the, uh, your chosen people through, through the wilderness to the promised land. Oh, God of the wilderness. O God of struggle, hear our prayers. Uh, with joy, we pray for those in places of war. Uh, for example, the Ukraine. Um, I'm not sure what else to say about that except, oh, Prince of Peace, hear our prayer. Uh, with joy, we pray for Frankie, who is recovering of surgery. May. Your healing presence be upon Frankie. May you guide the hearts and hands and minds of all of those in the healing professions, but especially all the good people who are impacting Frankie's life. And may you hold us safe in the palm of your hand until we can meet again. A God of healing, hear our prayer. I have a little um, prayer of thanksgiving, one of those little kernels of hope. It uh, keeps a person going. Um, an old, one of my oldest, uh, dearest friends, uh, and I went to them today. Um, I was looking for a couple of things, and uh, they took the opportunity. She took the opportunity to um, try to teach me a little bit about makeup. Um, I am fluid. I'm, I'm not entirely feminine. I don't frequently 
I'm not frequently drawn to makeup, um, but but uh, wanted to show me a couple of simple things. And uh, took me to the to the makeup counter and helped me with colors. And, um, just a couple of simple, <laughs> simple things, but I'm, I'm grateful because um, she stood there and just loudly and insistently used feminine pronouns for me to get, get me the help I needed from the little people behind the counter. Um, but then um, I, we ended up talking to, to two women, but the second one was, um, she was really sweet. She was a little flustered. Watched her run through all of the possible pronouns and kind of throw up her hands and go, I never to say. Um, and, I said I use they and them, but it's fine. And it, you could never go wrong asking people what their pronouns are. Um, you know, it had it had a tiny little teaching moment, but the, um, it gives me hope when you run across someone that um, is clearly clustered and wanting to do the right thing and willing to learn. Um, that is so much. Um, more hopeful for me than than people who insist on using whatever pronouns and think are best, no matter what you tell them. <laughs> um, so th it was a, a sweet little moment. Yeah, sweet is the right word, Joyous. Um, and so I had I had a good uh, a, a good uh, um, moment uh, today. Uh, hopeful, and uh, I thank God for it. Uh, the small, numerous goodnesses in the world. Oh, God of uh, good-hearted people who are just trying for our prayer. Okay, I went off on a tangent. Did I miss any of the state prayers? That wasn't a tangent. It was my own prayer. And that was important, too. Well, if there was a prayer inside of you that you couldn't quite get out, oh, Oh, yes. Yes, it was. Um, it's okay. Because the psalmist tells us that God knows what we're going to say before the words can even form on our tongues. And so we know. We know that God has heard our prayers. Those spoken out loud. Those typed into Second Life chat. And those spoken only in the silence of our hearts. Excuse me. And that we pray them in the name of them, Jesus Christ. Amen. We have done a lot of talking. Let's take a moment of silence to listen to what God might be saying. Speak, Lord, for your servant. Listen. I hear eggs. Who says such things? <laughs> Come thou wisdom from on high, and order all things far and nigh. To us the path of not show, and cause us in haste to go. With the Spirit descend upon us. So that we might live in your ways. Drive us far from the foolishness of this world and lead us into the life you've ordained for us. Through the commandments and teaching from the prophets and sages and ancestors to the ways that your creation continues to show us your magnificence and the love of Jesus Christ. 
may we listen and learn and love. Amen. I'd like to leave you with a fantastic thought of what it means to plant and to be good seeds. These words were written by Jocelyn Stevenson, who was the primary writer for Fraggle Rock and a close friend of Jim Henson. She had this to say about his unexpected death. And Jim left the planet so suddenly, all of us who loved him worked with him, were inspired by him, gathered in New York City. We were like dandelion seeds, clinging to the stem and to each other. And on May 16th, the wind began to blow. There's no stem anymore. We're all floating on the breeze. That's scary and exhilarating, and there's nothing we can do about it. But gradually, we'll all drift to the ground and plant ourselves. And no matter what we grow into, it'll be influenced by Jim. We're Jim's seeds. And it's not only those of us who knew him. Everyone who was touched by his work is a Jim. He changed our lives. He changed the world. And we'll continue his work because that's how inspiration operates. People die, but inspiration lives and grows. Inspired by his gentleness, we'll fill the world with gentleness. Inspired by his vision, he'll fill the world with vision. Inspired by his chicken imitation, we'll fill the world with laughter. And it really is just this simple. God loves you. So don't forget to love each other. Go with God. Go in peace. And amen. Inspiration is something we can all do, believe it or not. Well, after last week's service, this song popped into my head. Perfect sewing song about doing good.
talk about it. If you're a warring man, I am. Shout about it. Have a great weekend. Thanks for the service. See you Sunday.